Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about analyzing an experiment that has two factors, but when your question of interest really has to do with how to find an optimal response for one of the factors. All right, so in a previous couple of videos, uh, hopefully links up here, we, will, we talked about an experiment that had variety and density for tomato plants and yield was the primary response variable of interest. And now we're going to take that same uh, experiment, but we're going to think about the question, well, how do you find uh, a particular variety density combination that provides the optimal yield? All right. And so one approach that you could use that's based on the analyses that was provided in the previous videos is to sort of fit these ANOVA models and choose the particular variety density combination that maximizes yield. That might be one way to do it. Uh, but there's not really any reason to believe that the actual optimal density is one of the four that you just happen to have had in the previous experiment, right? The optimal density could be between or beyond uh, one of those combinations. And so that's the problem we're going to address here in this video. All right, so this is a look at that data that we've been talking about. Uh, it's now, again, balanced and complete, so we don't have to worry about that nuance. Uh, and as before, you can see here, that you have uh, some curvature with regard to density, and you have variety C seemingly outperforming varieties A and B. And so just from looking at this picture, number one, you might say, look, if I had to just pick from this picture, I'd probably choose variety C uh, and density 30. Um, and yeah, I mean, that would be totally reasonable based on the picture and based on the statistics that we're going to gather, that would just support that conclusion. But again, there might be reason to believe that density of 30 might not be the optimal. It seems like it should be close to 30, but maybe you're really trying to optimize yield. And so you're going to be willing to choose a variety that's a little bit less or a little bit more than 30. But the question is, how do you know? Is it more or less than 30? And how do you find that optimal? And it, so what we're going to be thinking about is building a model that has curvature for the response variable for this explanatory variable density. If we just use a linear model for density, then the only options are that we have a positive slope, in which case the maximal yield is at positive infinity for density. Otherwise, we could have had a situation where we had a negative slope, and that indicates that our maximal yield occurs at a density of negative infinity. So just doing a linear model doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And what we're going to do instead is that we're going to use a quadratic model for density. So in every model that we're going to consider here is to include density and density squared in the model. All right, and now there are many different ways within this model that we could incorporate variety. Okay, and so generally the options are, um, well, two options, but we're actually going to throw three options. So why not tell all three options? Number one is we're going to assume that variety has no effect and that would just have this equation for density. Uh, if we want a parallel curves model, we're going to include variety. And if we want a model that has completely independent curves for every uh, level of variety, then we're going to include an interaction between variety and the linear density and variety and that quadratic density. All right, so this, uh, in those last two approaches, the parallel curves model looks like uh, the equation right here. So we have that line for density, but we also have uh, an, a line for variety here that just has the effect of shifting that curve for density up and down. If we have independent curves, then you can see we have to add two more lines. Those additional lines are the interaction between the variety and the linear term for density, as well as variety and that quadratic term for density. Uh, if we just plot these different models, this is the depiction of those models. That first plot shows you in a situation where you have no effective density whatsoever. So I've turned all the points black, just to indicate that we're treating them equally because there's no variety in the model. Uh, probably not reasonable for what we've seen for these data. The next line down shows the situation when you have uh, parallel curves, that is you include density uh, as well as for density, density squared, as well as variety in the model. That seems like a pretty reasonable fit. Uh, and then the bottom curve has the last model where you include the interaction between the linear term for density the quadratic term for density with the variety in both cases. And so you can see now you have different lines uh, for each of the possible varieties. Okay. All right, so now that's fine and dandy, but how do you find the maximum? 
So here is the equation that allows you to find the maximum. In terms of density, in all these models, even the one with interactions, but I'll talk about that in a second, you have a quadratic curve for density. And so the question now to you is, how can you find the value for density that maximizes the expected yield? All right? So you might want to pause the video right now and try to determine right from this equation, from this quadratic equation, how you find the maximum. All right, so hopefully you paused and you found out the answer and the answer happens to be, well, number one, you only have a maximum if beta two is negative. Okay, so that's the first requirement. And then if beta two is negative, then it turns out that the maximum occurs at this value, negative beta one over two beta two. So if you have point estimates for beta one and beta two, you can just plug them in and that gives you a point estimate for the uh, density that provides maximum yield. Finding uncertainty here is a little bit more complex. My suggestion, if you want to go that route, is that you conduct a Bayesian analysis. You get the joint posterior for beta 1 and beta 2. You take samples from that joint posterior, calculate this quantity, negative beta 1 divided by 2 beta 2, uh, and then you can calculate that for all, uh, for a bunch of samples, and you can get both point estimates uh, and uh, credible intervals. Okay, so let's just talk about those three models that we had. The first model with didn't have variety at all. So we just have here a curve for density. You'll notice that the coefficient for the quadratic term for density is in fact negative. So we will have a maximum for this model and we could calculate it from that value for beta one. Uh, so you take negative beta one divided by two beta two uh, and you'll find out that that term actually tends to be positive, right? Because the negative coefficient for beta two cancels with the negative sign in that calculation and you'll get a density that should be somewhere in the range or close to 30. If you include variety, then the analysis is still pretty simple because when finding that maximum density, you can just ignore variety and just do the same calculation, but now with these new coefficients for density. Finally, if you have the situation where you have independent curves, that is a different curve for every variety, um, then what you need to do is decide on which variety you're going to find the maximum density for. So if you decided variety C, then that's fine because that was the reference level. So you can ignore everything down below and just use the coefficient for density. If you choose either A or B, uh, you have to do a little bit more work to find out what the equation is, but it involves using those interaction coefficients. But in any case, you can do it. It's not too complicated. And so this was just a demonstration of how, what scientific question you have will affect the analysis that you do. In this case, when we're trying to find a maximum with regard to one of the explanatory variables, then we're going to, uh, and if that explanatory variable is continuous, then we're going to use a quadratic in that variable in order to find a maximum. All right, I think this is wrapping up this entire regression playlist. So I hope you stick around on this channel, go through some other videos, uh, learn and learn and learn all about statistics. Hope, glad you joined us.